again the remainder is not zero they have therefore we have to proceed now the divided is 72 52 is the divisor 72 divided by 52 1 times plus 20 so the remainder is not zero here we have to proceed 52 20 52 when it is divided by 10 20 2 times 40 into 2 plus 12 again it is not zero therefore we have to proceed 20 divided by 12 20 is the dividend 12 is the divisor 1 times 12 8 12 1 plus 8 again it is not zero therefore we have to proceed 12 equals to 8 12 divided by 8 1 8 so 8 into 1 plus 4 remainder is not zero we have to proceed divide under 8 divisor is 4 8 divided by 4 2 times so 4 into 2 plus 0 When we got the remainder as zero, the divisor will be the HCF of the given numbers. So HCF of three forty four twelve is four. On the second subdivision is we have to find the HCF of eight sixty seven and two fifty five. Among these two, eight sixty seven is the largest number. This is the value of A. Two fifty five is the value of B. Therefore, in Euclid's Division lemma a equals to b q plus r. A value is 867, which is equals to b value is 255. We have to find the values of q and r, and we have to proceed with Euclid's division algorithm. So 867 dividing it by 255, 255 into 3, 15, 15, 16. 3 times 765 2 0 so 255 into 3 plus 1 or 2 the remainder is not equal to 0 therefore we have to proceed divided as 255 and the divisor is 1 or 2 255 divided by 1 or 2 let us take 2 times 4 0 2 so 1 5 1 or 2 into 2 Plus fifty one. Again, the remainder is not equals to zero. Therefore, we have to proceed. Divided this one or two, divisor is fifty one. So one or two, dividing it by fifty one, what will we get? Two times two ten. Yes, we got the answer. Fifty one into two plus zero. The remainder is zero. Therefore, fifty one is the highest common factor of eight sixty seven and two fifty five. So now we have to find the HCF of ten thousand two twenty four and nine thousand six forty eight. Highest number is ten thousand two twenty four. This is the value of A. This is the value of B. Therefore, ten thousand two twenty four, which is equals to nine six four eight. We have to find the quotient and the remainder. Let us do it. So one zero two two four divided by nine six four eight. We can do it with only one times. So nine six four eight. Twelve, seven, three, four. One zero two two four divided by nine six four eight one times nine six four eight fourteen six seven five. So nine six four eight into one plus five seventy six. The remainder is not zero. Therefore, nine six four eight is divided by five seventy six. Nine six four eight divided by five seventy six. Let us choose one times five seventy six. Three triple eight five seventy six into six times. Thirty-six, three, forty-two, forty-five, four, thirty, thirty-four. Six times three, four, five, six, two, three, four. So five seventy-six into sixteen plus four thirty-two. Again, the remainder is not zero. We have to proceed. 
576 should be divided by 432 so 576 divided by 432 one times we can choose 432 4 4 1 so 432 into 1 plus 144 again the remainder is not zero we have to proceed 432 is the divided 144 is the divisor so 432 Divided by one forty four, three times it will give us the value four thirty two. So one forty four into three plus zero, we got the remainder as zero. The divisor in that step will be the HCF of the given number. So HCF of ten thousand two twenty four and nine thousand six forty eight is one forty four. Next, we have to find the HCF of three numbers. Uh, I already told you when it is given as three numbers, we have to first consider the first two numbers. And uh, after getting the HCF of first two numbers, we have to find the HCF with, with the third number. Among the two numbers, ninety is the largest number, so A equals to ninety and B equals to eighty-four. A equals to B Q plus R. A equals to ninety. B value is eighty four. Question and remainder we have to find it. So ninety when dividing it by eighty four, one times eighty four, remainder is six. So eighty four into one plus six, the remainder is not zero. Therefore we have to proceed. Eighty four is the dividend. Six is the divisor. Eighty four when it is divided by six, one times six, two four, four times twenty four. Into fourteen plus zero. Now the remainder is zero. Therefore, the HCF of eighty-four and ninety is six. Now what we have to do is we have to find the HCF of six and the third number, which will be the HCF of all the three numbers. So A equals to one twenty, B equals to six. Why we are doing this is we have to consider the largest number as the value of A. So substituting it in A equals to B Q plus R, which is Euclid's division lemma. A value is one twenty, B value is six. We have to find the quotient and the remainder. One twenty when it is divided by six, two times twelve, the zero. So six into Twenty plus zero. We got the remainder as zero, which uh, whereas the six is the HCF of all the three numbers. So HCF of eighty-four, ninety, one twenty is six. In the next problem, we have to find the largest number which divides one two three zero and one nine two six, leaving Reminder twelve in each case. Okay, so we have to find the largest number which divides these two numbers, leaving twelve as a reminder. Let us find this. So first we'll subtract the remainder from the given number. One two three zero minus twelve. So one two three zero minus twelve is. One two one eight. And one nine two six minus twelve will give us one nine one four. We left remainder twelve from both the numbers. Now what we have to do is we have to find the HCF of these two numbers, which will be the largest number. That divides one two three zero and one nine two six. Let us do it. Among these two numbers, one nine one four is the largest number. Therefore, we have to consider the value of A as one nine one four and value of B as one two one eight. The Euclid's division lemma is A equals to B Q plus R. So A equals to one nine one four, which is equals to one two one eight. Let us proceed using Euclid's division algorithm. Therefore, we have to find out the quotient and the remainder. So dividing. One nine one four by one two one eight one times one two one eight fourteen six nine 
So 1 to 1 8 into 1 plus 6 9 to 6. The remainder is not 0. Therefore we have to proceed. Now the dividend is 1 to 1 8 which is equal to divisor is 6 9 to 6. So let us divide 1 to 1 8 by 6 9 to 6. 1 times 2 522. 696 into 1 plus 522. Again the remainder is not 0. Therefore we have to proceed. 696 is the divide and 522 is the divisor. Let us do it. 696 divided by 522. 1 times 522. 4, 7, 1. So 522 into 1 plus 174. Again the remainder is not 0. We have to proceed. The divider is 522 and the divisor is 174. Let us do this. 522 divided by 174. Let us choose 3. It will give us 522. So 174 into 3 plus 0. The remainder is 0. Therefore in the same equation the divisor will be the HCF of the two numbers. 1914 and 1218 which will also be the largest number that divides 1230 and 1926. Next problem is if D is the highest common factor of 32 and 60. So what we have to do is first we have to find the HCF of 32 and 60. Next we have to proceed with we have to find the values of X and Y satisfying D equals to 32X plus 60Y. So substituting the D value here we have to satisfy this equation by finding the values of X and Y. Let us do So first step what we have to do is we have to find the HCF of 32 and 60. So largest number is 60. Therefore this is the divided. 32 is the divisor. 60 divided by 32. 1 times 32. 32 into 1 plus 28. The remainder is not 0. Therefore we have to proceed. Dividend is 32. Divisor is 28. 32 when it is divided by 28, 1 times 28, 4. So 28 into 1 plus 4. We have to proceed, the re remainder is not 0. 28 is the dividend, 4 is the divisor. 28 when it is divided by 4, 7 times 28. So 4 into 7 plus 0. Therefore the remainder is 0. 4 is the HCF of 32 and 60. So D value according to the given question is 4. Now what we have to do is we have to find the value of X and Y by satisfying the equation D equals to 32X plus 60Y. We know the value of D is 4 which is equals to 32X plus 60Y. Now what we have to do is we have to choose the values of X and Y. By choosing the values of x and y and simplifying the right hand side of the equation, we have to get the value of 4. So we have to choose the values of x and y accordingly. So I have to get 4. The minimum number I am choosing is 2. So if I do so, 32 into 2 will give me 64. Right? But the value of d is 4. So I should get the 4 value. Here we have 60. So if I choose y value as minus 1, plus into minus will become minus. Therefore, 64 minus 60 will give me 4. So what is the value we are choosing for x and y? We are choosing the value of x as 2 and y as minus 1. Ninth problem is a positive integer when divided by 88 gives the reminder 61. What will be the reminder when the same number is divided by 11? So first uh, step what it is given is 
let us consider the Euclidean's division lemma a equals to b q plus r. So, a positive integer, we don't know the positive integer, let us consider it as a as it is when divided by 88. Therefore, divisor is given 88, quotient we, did, we don't know. So, let us consider it as q gives the remainder 61, r value is given 61. Okay, so this is the first point given to us, we have constructed. What we have to find is, what will be the remainder when the same number, we have to find the remainder when the same number is divided by 11. So, same number in the sense, we can consider either A or this value, where both are one and the same. So, I am going to take this. What we have to find is, we have to find the remainder when 11 divides 88 Q plus 61. Okay. So, that is what is asked to find. So, in this itself, if you take these two values, 88 is obviously a multiple of 11. So, we need not bother about that. It will give the remainder 0. Now, what we have to do is, we have to find the remainder when 61 is divided by 11. That is the answer which is asked to us will be given. Okay. So, what we have to do now is 61 when it is divided by 11. So, 61 when it is divided by 11, 5 times 55, so 6. So, 11 into 55 plus 6. So, 6 is the reminder when the this number is also divided by 11. So, in the 10th problem, what we have to prove is, we have to prove that two consecutive positive integers are always co-prime. So, we know what is the consecutive positive integers, the next next numbers. We have to prove that the two consecutive positive numbers are always co-prime. First, let us see what is a co-prime. Co-prime is two positive integers. Two positive integers are said to be relatively prime or co-prime. Both are one and the same when the HCF is 1. So, taking two positive integers, if the HCF of those two positive integers, if it is 1, then we call it as a co-prime or relatively prime. Let me explain with the example. I will take two numbers, 2 and 3. So, 2 as a factor, 1 and 2. 3 as a factor, 1 and 3. Between these two, that is 2 and 3, the highest common factor is 1. Therefore, 2 and 3 are called co-prime. So, similarly, what we have to now do is, we have to prove that two consecutive positive integers are always co-prime. So, two positive integers, I am considering it as i and i plus 1. If I prove the HCF of i and i plus 1 is 1, then I can say that is our always co-prime. So, how to prove the uh, HCF between the i and i plus 1 as 1 is, between these two numbers, i plus 1 will be the largest number. If i value is 1, i plus 1 will be 2. So, obviously, i plus 1 will be the largest number which is equals to i. We have to find the quotient and the remainder. So, i into 1 quotient plus remainder I have to choose 1. So, simplify this and see i into 1 is i plus 1. So, we got the value. But the remainder is not 0. Therefore, we have to proceed. Now, the dividend is i and the divisor is 1. So, what quotient should I choose according to get i? I should choose i as the quotient. Therefore, the remainder will be 0. Now, we got the remainder as 0. In the same step, the divisor is 1. I chose the uh, i and i plus 1 and I told you if the highest common factor between the i plus 1 and i, if we get it as a 1, then we can say that i and i plus 1 are co-prime. We got 1 as a highest common factor of i and i plus 1. HCF of i and i, HCF of i and i plus 1 is 1. Therefore, i and i plus 1 are co-prime. 
Hens Brot. In today's class, we started chapter 2 and we saw the topic Euclid's division lemma and Euclid's division algorithm. We solved the problems under the topics. If you have any doubts, please post your questions in the comment box. And in the next class, we will see the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Thank you.